I need to be able to move a lot of material around. We farm a couple different spots and we're picking up compost for our hens, we're moving firewood around. Basically, for the last 10, 15 years, I thought I always uh, needed a truck and I've had a truck for a while, but I've got an older truck that's starting to get ready to pass away. It gets 14 miles to the gallon, which is not that great as gas gets more expensive. We just recently invested in an all electric vehicle and I wanted to share some notes about my first real haul with it. I pulled quite a bit more in volume and a similar amount in weight than what I normally would with my Ford F-150. The car did a great job. I'm going to dive into this new electric farm truck that we're living with. Part of the decision to get this newer car, newer to us, is that we've got this sweet little lady and putting her in a car seat in an old Ford pickup truck did not feel super safe and the car that we were driving around which was a honda fit a 2007 honda fit lovely car really great to be able to bop around in and uh, do farm related activities but definitely not very safe for a little friend like this we landed on this particular car because my good friend carl hey carl if you're watching this really suggested he has the exact same uh, type this is a chevy bolt so it's an all-electric car it's this one happens to be a 2020 it had 26,000 miles, which is extremely low. It has a 100,000 mile warranty on the, the electric engine, and it was $12,000. has no issues. It's rust-free. It was a great deal. Even if it was a gas car, that would have been a phenomenal deal. Um, so we went with this as our base starting place. We drove it around as is for a little bit and just got a feel for it. It's super comfortable. It's the first time uh, either Sasha or I have had a new-ish car one that's really clean on the interior. We're making short short work of getting that resolved. It's moving very quickly towards being a farm style car. Um, but it's been comfortable and safe to drive. We feel really comfortable with our little lady Zelda in a nice quality car seat that somebody was uh, getting rid of. And then to keep seats in decent shape, just cut out some ply and so for putting compost crates and containers uh, when we're just using the car without the trailer it can be a little bit of a platform in there we wouldn't do that when Zelda's in the car seat but that gives us some room but I really needed the full capacity of a truck and so I wanted to talk about this stuff down here I'll put some notes in the description for those folks that might be interested in this but this is basically a $300 class 3 hitch. It's a 2 inch square stock hitch. My friend Harlan put this on. It mounts in a decent way. Maybe not as well as I'd love onto the frame, but it's got a pretty assertive mounting behind the crash bar. And then we, with my friend Carl's advice, uh, did some wiring to tag into the existing electrical system of the car. And so this way the trailer has flashers for turn signals and brakes. It's completely legal. Um, I got the trailer at Lowe's for $1,000. And so right now what we're looking at, it's a $12,000 car with a really strong warranty on it. It's safe and clean and quiet uh, and very, very inexpensive to drive. $1,000 for the trailer and about $500 in total between wiring the um, the mount and my friend's help. So we're under $14,000 to have a vehicle that can pull more material than my truck. I was pretty surprised how well it handled this going down the highway. I drove a little shy of 40 miles today. I'll share some stats towards the end of the video about what it actually cost to drive, but it was under, it might have been under a dollar or somewhere around a dollar. It would have been eight dollars to drive my truck. I'll put up on the screen what the actual numbers are, uh, but this is a normal day for me of what I move around. I've got farming gear like hoses that I need to move. I've got our electrified uh, rotary plow uh, BCS that's locked in real nice with ratchet straps. We did our compost pickup from uh, two different restaurants for feeding our hens, and then I've got an electric push mower in the back. So it's not the heaviest thing, it's not like I was moving crushed stone, but it's a pretty significant and bulky amount of material. The car did just fine. I've been finding with the warmer weather, we've been getting an average of 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. That's kind of how you measure efficiency with these. And with all of the material in the back, myself, and all this stuff being pulled behind and the trailer, I was getting 3.8. So. Uh, a little tiny bit of an efficiency drop over the last 40 miles of driving, but pretty insignificant. I've got some last little bits of wiring to do in configuration, but there are five panels, five solar panels out 
uh, on the south end of our property line there that once wired up uh, should be able to drive the entire process of recharging the car. These panels are reclaimed from an old solar farm. I got them at a pretty low price as used panels. And the mount, I talked about that in another video, cost $30 to make. I traded some elderberry plants for the 10 AWG wire to run over it. So the only thing that's actually new in this whole project is the trailer and the hitch. Um, so nice, nice opportunity to repurpose some things and get some things that are slightly used. This truck has been really wonderful to me. I bought this almost 10 years ago. Now it's a rear wheel drive, uh, so I can't really use it off road or in inclement weather. So it's kind of a lateral move to use the car in that. Like it's not as though I, I used to be able to drive through muddy fields with my truck and now I can't with the car. This was a road truck. And of course, it's really nice to just be able to have like a big open space that's directly attached to the vehicle, but this is actually less space than that trailer and the actual interior of the truck has very very little room it's for one or two people at most but i can't really load anything additional in there so there's less total storage space in this truck it's 14 miles to the gallon there are belts that are starting to really wear the doors don't close exactly right i definitely don't want to put my daughter in here if i can help it and so i think i'll i'll offer this truck up and move it along. It's kind of important to make a side note here that I don't want to do a greenwashing thing and pretend that like, oh, I got this electric car, therefore uh, gas is bad and electric is amazing. It's fraught. No matter what you do to move yourself around or do farming work with machines or tools, um, there's some questions in there. But I think buying an electric car that's used takes a little of the burden off ethically. But then also uh, my friend Carl, who talked me into that car, He's got some very specific ideas on how to take apart the car when it finally dies and repurpose the battery that's in that car into a whole bunch of really powerful off-grid um, battery backup systems for micro homes. There's probably two or three, if not more, homes worth of energy in that car once the car actually dies and then that feels ethically valuable to me. Like I said, I'll share some more details in the description down below about the bits that I'm working with here as well as the specifics of how much um, more energy efficient it is to move this bulk material with this vehicle rather than my truck. I think it's right around 10 times uh, the cost savings or 10 times less total cost to drive with this. It felt like a, a, a very competent, safe, comfortable job. Really minor knock on the efficiency, about 10% reduction in efficiency. I'm thrilled to bits with the idea of being able to move our operation uh, to a truckable car as needed. And when I need more storage than the car can offer, but I don't need the whole trailer or the complexity of that, I got this fun thing. 70 bucks or so that slides into the same two inch so we'd unhitch the trailer and put this on and it gives me an additional uh, basically like substation wagon worth of total storage space for 70 bucks i'll put that in the description if people are interested let me know what kind of questions you have or comments or ideas suggestions do you think this is a bad idea i'm open to hearing that um certainly you know uh, recognizing the complexity of moving towards an electric vehicle. I think there are some huge benefits. There also are some false senses of security that you're doing the right thing. It's, so everything's more complex than on the surface, but we're moving towards something that feels compelling to us. Let me know what you think. Let's keep having discussions. We'll share more notes on this as time goes on. Once we actually start charging the car off of the solar array, array we'll talk about that too. And then we'll have a fully off-grid solar powered um, electric farm truck, car truck, cruck. Oh, no, you should be in it. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think, Zaldoni? <laughs>